All right, Jim McGrew here again. We're going to um, try and uh, see what we can do in video number two to show you how we set up a file. Uh, if you remember in the last video, we uh, homed the machine and we set the low Z limit switch and we warmed up our spindle. So at this point, uh, you know, I've got my, I'm going to in this case run a pocket tool path in this piece of material here. Um, I've already made the file up in Vectric, which while you were waiting on your machine, it would be a good idea to uh, run and uh, simulate files in the Vectric software. That's basically the best place to learn it. The controller uh, really is a great, great thing, and it, it's a very important part of the process, but you really want to get past it as quick as possible and, and get to running files. The controller has uh, got a few features in it that are uh, important to the operation of the machine, but for the most part, it's just a very functionary part of the process. Um, what I've done is I uh, made a file up in Vectric a little while ago to run a pocket in this piece of material here. And uh, I don't have uh, uh, stops on the table. I haven't secured the table. I'm not going to run the vacuum. I'm just going to do this to simulate uh, running a file so that we can uh, show you how this works. Now, at this point, we've honed the machine, we've set the low Z limit, and I told you I was going to bring my trusty Logitech back. Now, I don't have my laser on my machine, uh, as many of you do. It's a good feature to have, but it's not a required feature. I've I work, uh, been working for years without it, even though I own one. I'm, I am going to put the new one on. Uh, the uh, new one is uh, just far superior to the one that I had. Uh, I had a little, mine would move around a little bit. But my Logitech here, I told you that the buttons were assigned to the uh, uh, arrow keys you'll see here on the uh, machine. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move my machine. Hold on, let me click so that I'm operating. Remember that you're, uh, you're always operating when your WinCNC screen is uh, the most prevalent thing on your screen. Your screen to show you this area here, this, this area outlined in red, to me should be set to your table size. Not to your material size, not to your gantry, not to your soft limits. It should be set to your table size. Um, and that's just a, a personal thing. Uh, the other day I found somebody had uh, changed theirs to read the total limits of their gantry. Uh, you're not going to be able to cut out here in the open, so there's no sense in doing that. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move my Z out onto my material. And the first thing I'm going to do is go back and get my trusty touch pad, put it on top of my material, and I'm going to hit touch top and I'm going to set my Z. I'll show you why I do this first in a minute. As it comes down, uh, it's going to touch off on that pad, which if you remember is a half an inch thick. Uh, in my case, I have mine set, if you notice over here on my Z, I have mine set at 0.75 off my material. Uh, I truly, truly believe, and even though I've been operating these things for a while, I still very seriously believe in testing everything while you're getting new at this. Um, I keep a little piece of aluminum stock nearby that's exactly an inch by three quarter thick. Uh, in this case, if, uh, if my bit is exactly three quarters of an inch off my material, then my little piece of three quarters is going to fit nice and tight right up in there, just like that, you see. And uh, that tells me that uh, I'm pretty damn close and I can live with that. Um, again, I, I just believe in testing everything when you knew. Now, what, I, what I've done now is I've set my Z, so I'm going to move over to the edge of my material. Turn a bit down, and if you watch the buttons, I'm going to move my X and Y right over the edge of my, uh, right over the corner edge in lower left X and Y of the material I'm going to run, the file that I'm going to run within the material, and at this point I'm going to zero X and Y, and you'll see that everything went zero, zero. My uh, bit is uh, point. 96.096 off the table. I'm going to hit Z1, enter, and it will come up to exactly one inch off the top of that material. Again, I can take my trusty aluminum bar and test it if I need to. Uh, I've set X and Y. This is something I really love, a feature of WinCNC, is to come into the settings tab, go to home positions, and pick uh, one of these H positions. In this case, 
Uh, I have H5 chosen as job Z. You'll see it's highlighted here in the position name. And at this point, I'm going to hit get position. And if you look, it's going to select those positions in relationship to absolute home. If you remember, absolute home is where the switches are, not where the machine is, not where the Z is, where the home switches are. So it always knows where it is. Um, at that point, I hit get position. I'm going to hit OK. And what I've just done is I've just saved a home position for that particular file. Now, uh, at this point, I have Z set. For the purpose of this simulation, I'm, I'm, I've got my bit one inch off my material. I'm going to zero my Z, even though it's one inch off the table, because I'm not going to turn my spindle on and I'm not going to cut into my material. You see, what I'm doing is I'm new at this, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test run my file so that I learn this procedure without damaging my wood, without throwing away very expensive bits. Okay, I've got my uh, Z up in the air, and if, uh, if, you're, if you're due to cut deep into the material, you may want to raise it up higher and Z it up higher. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm only going to be cutting about a, point, a tenth of an inch into the uh, material, so one inch is plenty. Okay, at this point I'm going to call my file up, open. You'll see here I've made a file, which is basically a pocket file with two uh, runs. Uh, I'm going to, WinCNC has the ability to drag a box right over the material. And you'll see, it will blow it up so you can see. Here's home position. <clears throat> you see the little red dot is uh, the uh, end of the bit. You'll see that it'll show where it's going to enter the material and where it's going to exit the material and the file that it's going to run. At this point, I'm going to run the file. The Z is going to go up. It's going to find the high limit. It's going to turn on the spindle, which it's not doing because I've got the spindle off. It's going to come down. It's going to go out to, if you remember, let's uh, call up that position. And you can see it running the file. It's See that little rabbit running? You'll see the little red dot. That's where your bit, that's your bit traveling. And once it completes, it's going to pick up and then it's going to run home and the file is done. Okay, now uh, in that case, we've basically run a file. Um, in a minute, we'll go into a video where I'll show you a couple of the features and a restart, but uh, that's the basic premise of running a file. Um, now that you've test run your file with your Z up in the air, um, you want to go down and uh, retouch pad your Z and run your file. Make sure your spindle's on or whatever you know your situation is. Um, and uh, happy cutting. We'll go on to video number three here in just a moment.